Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Primal Fear Movie Thoughts Edward Norton apparently came up with a number of things for the the yeah for his portrayal and for what he was going to do in this movie and he had really good instincts he was the one who came up with this kind of the the stutter of Aaron and how Roy would slam Richard Gear into the wall which was apparently even completely ad libbed so Gear's reaction to it is completely that that was how he reacted when this other actor did this to so that's that's yeah and the the slow clap was also his idea and I I was gonna just briefly say I love the the way that's filmed that just it goes you know the moment that that gear is how could that and then it cuts to to Norton's hands and he just slowly starts it yeah fantastic and they had considered a, you know, an, an alternate ending where Martin would put Aaron on trial. Or, yeah, there, there would be another trial and Aaron would actually be convicted. But, you know, justice would be done. But instead, they went with this where this egotistical veil who thinks he's smarter than everybody, you know, he, he certainly thinks that he's he can you know he can get anybody off and he yeah he he genuinely believes that Aaron you know at, at first he you know he says you just look innocent there that's what you should look like look at in look in the mirror practice you know but then over the course of it I, I, I really don't think he did it and then at the end he actually yeah he did get Aaron off when, yeah, and, and, you know, Aaron had him lower his guard by, you know, doing this country hick kind of act, and I, I'm really glad that that's, that they didn't go with the alternate, it, you know, as the way it ends is just spot on, that it, you know, yeah, that that after all of this manipulation, all of these, you know, different angles that Martin tries to work, and yeah, at the end of the day, he was being manipulated from the first moment that he had contact with Aaron. In actually, even before he himself, you know, just seeing. You know, and and that's also that's one of the first things we, the audience, see about Aaron. He's he looks like he's in complete shock when they find him by the you know the the rail. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not he's not going to get anything out of trying to run with all the cops right there, but he's not like um, crap or okay, take me in. No, he looks like he has just seen, you know. He's, he's just seen something that's never going to leave his mind. He is scarred to the core now. And, yeah, that, you know, even if he, you know, e even if he did somehow do it, he clearly isn't some kind of cold psychopath. And I really love... You know, then then Martin walks up. You know, as as Edward is like, oh come on, you know, don't be, love hurts, and then you know, which is a hilarious song, especially if you hear it with the full orchestration. Just it, I don't think it's intentional, but that song is self parody. But yeah, you know, Martin walks through the the courtroom, and the camera sort of turns upside down, like, you know, justice has been turned upside down. It's, 
you know, really great shot. Now, some say that the the twist completely ruins the film. Some say it saves the film. It would definitely be a completely different film if not for the twist. You know, I mean, and they could have. They could have ended the movie on, you know, Laura, Janet, you know, Laura Linney's Janet, excuse me, frustrated with the outcome and yeah, I mean, really, you don't even need that line. If, if you wanted to cut the twist, you could cut out Martin going to see Aaron. You know, I mean, we can we can surmise. He probably went to see him and, he could, you know, congratulate him and everything. You know, you could end it on, okay, he won because they now, they accept that Aaron exists, that Roy exists. And, that, you know, but, yeah, as it is, I... I think it was a really strong film before the twist, and I don't think it ruins it, although I can understand seeing seeing it that way, and it definitely is. I'll, I'll get a little bit more into it, you know. It is a bit of a sensationalist take on the whole disassociative identity disorder thing, and yeah, I'll, I'll get more into that. but. At least one reviewer said that the the twist was overexplained and underlined when this reveal should have been more simple and quiet, that that would have made it much more effective. I can see that point of view. I think that certainly you needed a lot of what was said in the scene to be said. I don't think it would really have quite worked otherwise. And IMDb notes that, you know, it is a bit of a, I, I want to say they note it as a, a decided plot hole. You can change. You know, you can, you can go from one plea to an insanity plea in a trial. That's not a problem. But they needed, you know, for it to, it would, it would, there wouldn't have been that conflict there if not, and the movie would have been considerably shorter. You know, he, he sees the tape and it's like, well, I just changed it on Santa plate. There we go. You know, that's, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's a courtroom, it's a Hollywood courtroom drama. There's going to be at least some stuff that is un, unrealistic and such, although that is a pretty big one. And... Yeah, I suppose that does bring me to, you know, it is very much a Hollywood depiction of disassociative identity disorder. It's it's this very kind of showy and very, you know, it, it works in this kind of, there are cameras on and it's, you know, we want a big speech and such, you know, each time Roy comes out that, well, I suppose, okay, maybe, maybe every other time, I suppose he doesn't really, yeah, not, not really with, with the, the neuros, like, yeah, Francis McDormand, and not really when, you know, when he's on the stand, but, you know, when, when he first, yeah, b both times he comes out, you know, he, yeah, that, that Roy takes over, supposedly, in, you know, in the, in a room just with gear, he, you know, yeah, he delivers a speech. There is an entire thing there, you know, it's not, it's, it's, quote, unquote, that easy in, in this, you know, where in real life, you know, nobody really talks like that. It's it's you you can you can maybe get details like that out of you know a a suppressed you know alt alternate identity or you know, but it's not just going to be that they just spell it out for you like that. You know, although I suppose you could also say that that's that's the real Aaron 
doing that so that it makes it easier for you know and you know there are, there are debates as to when when I suppose I'm gonna go I'm just gonna keep calling him Roy when Roy came up with Aaron and you know some say well you know if he put on this you know facade for the lawyer and for everyone then it would you know then there's a chance that he would get off from that where you know if he was himself the whole time you know obviously that wouldn't have worked but then you know some someone like Alex would certainly have known what he was like before if he genuinely was openly acting the way Roy does now and talking the way Roy does now and you know and, and it was kind of you know he didn't mean to get caught but it caused you know the the archbishop was too quick and he caused a ruckus and so the police was called and they got him and then he came up with well maybe I can use dissociative identity disorder and that of course brings me to some people take away from this there's there's a IMDB thread about you know also about what I just covered but also that you know the message might be that you know dissociative disorder is just something made up by people who are guilty who you know want to you know go with an insanity plea instead of going to prison I don't think that that's the the message or I, I don't see that as what you take away rather that it's something you know it's it's something that can be abused I don't I don't see it as you know as the movie saying nobody has DID but that you know some very manipulative people will fake DID to to get out and again there is this you know even if whether the movie means to or not it does kind of make the case as it were that DID if you're just manipulative enough if you can fake it then people will buy it and you know unfortunately that it's it's not the only movie that kind of has you know yeah where where the person on trial actually did do it but they pretend that yeah that they their DID and thus you know get off on on that kind of thing and you know it's it's this kind of sensationalist thing I don't know if a lot of people thought it before writers did or the other way around but you know there was this sense with either people in a bunch of people in general or you know fi you know murder mystery writers and such that this kind of thing could be abused or might be abused and how would you be able to tell that kind of thing and yeah it's a movie that goes in and you know says you know how would you be able to, might might some be tricked into letting someone go because it's be, because they fake this condition and yeah i mean when when this came out we really did not understand DID anywhere near as well as we do today. I, I remember just a few years ago there was this article, I forget, I don't remember all that much of the content, but part of it was just legitimately DID does not exist in the real world in any way that resembles how Hollywood has presented it. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.